decide to do what we call secondary separation. That's what this thing these days. And the idea is that uh, one bunch of people are separated from liberals or modernists, and another bunch of people are separated not only from liberals and modernists, but from all the people who support liberals and modernists, or from all people who support those who support liberals and modernists, <laughs> or from those who support those who support those who might support somebody who is thinking of supporting, you know, so forth and so on. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, a yoke is something where two animals have to pull together. A yoke of oxen is a couple of oxen hooked up with a yoke. And the yoke runs down the middle of them and then goes across the necks. So then it's forbidden here that you get yoked up with an unsaved person. Now, a yoke means this. It means when one animal moves, the other animal has to move. That's that. That separation there is clear. In other words, you can't get hitched up with an unsaved person so that every time they move, you have to move. And under that, of course, would come marriage. The reason why marriage is forbidden being saved and unsaved people is because in a marriage, they're one flesh. And the Bible says... Now, along that line, it's just not a labor union. What about that? Well, I've studied the thing long and hard, and as I can see, there's nothing wrong with the labor union at all, as long as you don't have to do wrong when they do wrong. Now, Bob Jones Sr. had something very wise to say about this. He's a very wise man. I don't want to ever have you confuse Bob Jones Sr. with Bob Jones the second or the third or the fourth or the three and three quarters or whatever it is. But Bob Jones Sr. used to say, it is never a compromise to go as far as you can along the right road with anybody. It is always a compromise to go any distance along the wrong road with anybody. That's a profound saying. And that saying it is never a compromise to go as far as you can along the right road with anybody. That isn't a yoke. In fair words, if you had Catholics and Jews in Detroit that got together and they wanted to have a petition go around, uh, closing all X-rated adult movies, you could sign it. I'd sign it. I'd put my sign signature right between a father and a rabbi. I don't believe either one of them, but I, but if they're trying to do right, I can back them up where they're doing right. Same with that moral majority thing. Now, we don't support that thing financially, but if he's trying to do right, okay, I'm with him as long as he's trying to do right. Now, if he gets in a position where I've got to do wrong, then I've got to branch off with him. Good examples are when Billy Graham comes to town, has a meeting, uh, I couldn't go to the meeting. Why? Because people look at me as a pastor, and if I support the meeting, they think I support everything he supports. I'll, I'll not do it. However, I won't tell my people, you can't go. I mean, Billy Graham comes to town, Bob Jones says, any student of his ship goes to me. Why, you fascist fool, what are you talking about? That isn't American. You're going to meet you want to go to. Paul Roberts come to ground, get down, go see him. Now, you can laugh once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I want these fellows come in, it doesn't hurt you to go see him. If somebody invited me to come and preach at a Catholic church, I'd go. Somebody's a Ruppman preach at a Catholic church? Sure I would. But your life I would. I wouldn't get invited back. <laughs> but, I, but as far as that goes, I preached one time at Tennessee Temple and didn't get invited back. I preached one time at the Bible Baptist uh, College in Springfield didn't get invited back. I preached one time at Arlington, the Bi World Baptist Fellowship didn't get invited back. I preached as far as that go with the assembly of Bob Jones one time didn't get invited back. I've been to all four places one time, one night stand. I have a message I preach at those places. It has a magic touch. You know what it's called? It's called the whole armor of God. Isn't that a strange thing? Here's an outfit that professes to be militant. Here's a guy that gets up and preaches, and he's the son of a colonel and the grandson of a general and a great-grandson of a general, and has four generations of military blood in him, and he's a dog face, and his brother's a dog face, and he gets up and preaches the whole armor of God, and everybody gets scared to death and heads for the bushes. My, aren't we militant? Fourteen, being unequally yoked together with unbelievers. All right, don't get in the thing where you're in a bind. As long as the union doesn't force you to do something wrong, there's nothing wrong with blowing the union at all. Now, if you're in a position where you have to do something wrong, then you've got to part company. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Obviously none. What communion hath light with darkness? 
there they are on the same. What concord hath Christ with Belial? Belial is an Old Testament name. The New Testament name is Beelzebub. Children of the devil, wickedness. The word means vanity. That is nothingness. Concord hath Christ with Belial. Concord is an agreement. When the Pope wants to bring a country into subjection, he signs what they call a concordant. And a concordant is an agreement between the Pope and the country. Uh, the Pope's a pimp for a whore. And the whore is the Roman Catholic Church, Revelation 17. And the Pope is her pimp. You're welcome. You're welcome. I just try to talk for folks and understand me. You see? That's what they call them out in the world. Amen? Yeah. You bet your boot is. He drums up business for the harlot. Oh, and you take that thing right there. When he wants to take over a country, he signs what they call a concordat. He signed with the Charlemagne, Napoleon, Mussolini, Franco, and Adolf Hitler. Isn't that some company for a Christian to be keeping? My, what company? And that's a yoke. When they move, you have to move. When Hitler moves into Russia, all the Catholic bishops have to pray for the Third Reich. They're in a yoke. The bound. That's what's forbidden. Uh, verse 15, what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? The answer is none. All right, so separation obviously is this. Separation is obviously separation from unsaved people to where you're not yoked to them, to where when they move, you have to move. That's separation. Now there's one more. First Corinthians chapter 5, First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. And this has to do with saved people. Uh, I'll get 1 Corinthians chapter 5 in one hand, and while we're at it, pick up Romans 16, and I'll show you one that I never mentioned. I'll show you a passage on separation. You never heard from the platform of Bob Jones or Jack Van Imp any, any, any place else. They've got them all divided off these days. Uh, Neo, Jack Van Impey has what he calls neo-fundamentalists. And Bob Jones has what you call pseudo-fundamentalists. <laughs> So you have fundamentalists and pseudo-fundamentalists and neo-fundamentalists and fundamentalists and all this junk. Now, I'm a very simple-minded man, no matter what you heard. And I believe in, I believe in black and white, up and down. I like uh, baked potatoes with butter, see? Never mind the mayonnaise and the fricassee and the scallop. Just baked potatoes with butter, okay? I like vanilla ice cream. As far as I'm concerned, ice cream is vanilla. There is no other kind of ice cream. You say, do you like butter? That's frozen dessert. Chocolate's frozen dessert. Ice cream is vanilla. That's what ice cream is. <laughs> Candy is chocolate. See? So I have peppermint. That's bonbons, you know, delicate. Is that something? Sweets, you know. Candy is chocolate. Just, I'm plain, you see. So with me, there are two kind of fundamentalists. There are Bible-believing fundamentalists, and there are apostate fundamentalists. And that's the only distinction I make. I make a distinction between those that believe the book and those who don't believe the book. Just that simple. I'll show you one here the apostates will never bring up. All right, 1 Corinthians 5, 9. I wrote you an epistle not to keep company with fornicators. Now watch it. Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world. He didn't tell you couldn't have company with fornicators of this world. You can have company in the fornicators of this world. Is that how that thing is worded? Now keep reading. Or with the covetous or extortioners with idolaters, for then must you need to go out of the world. Now what's he saying? He said, I told you not to have company of fornicators, but you can't avoid the company of unsaved fornicators, idolaters, and adulterers unless you blow your brains out. How are you going to get away from them? You fellas work out the job. You know what's going on. I know what's going on. I've been out there in the world. I ain't no spring chicken man. I've had an AFL button on my on my cap working for the steamship corporation, Chickasaw, Alabama, drilling the holes in the bulkheads, man, with the put them light sockets in. I know what's going on. If some of the brethren don't, that's their problem. I know exactly what's going on. You fellas go to work and the guy opens his toolbox, he's got Playboy girls all over the toolbox, don't he? You sit there and have a lunch break, and the guy's talking about scoring last night and whose wife he went out with and you see so-and-so in that movie, an X-rated television, that was some scene where she blankety-blank. I know what's going on. If some of the spring chickens don't know what's going on, I know what's going on. And you can't get rid of these fornicators and drunkards and extortionists and murderers unless you just blow your brains out. 
You can't avoid them. You're working with them. Some of the brethren are real. They're real stupid, you know. I mean, they, because I don't ever eat a restaurant where they sell liquor. Why, you crazy fool, eat a restaurant where they smoke? <laughs> I don't ever eat a restaurant where they sell liquor. You buy your groceries at a grocery store where they sell liquor? You can get so separated, you're good for nothing. Yeah, I never buy, gro- I never buy groceries where they sell liquor. How about a gas station? They sell beer at the gas station where you gas up? You can't. You can't get away from unsaved people. How about the fellow you pay your taxes to? Is he saved? How about the guy who reads your light meter and your gas meter? Is he saved? You can't, you can't bust off all kidding and unsaved people unless you leave, leave the world. Eleven. But now I have written to you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother, there's a saved person, be a fornicator or a covetous or idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such a one, no, not to eat. That has nothing to do with supporting neo-Orthodox. That warning there not to keep company with those brethren has nothing to do with whether they support Jimmy Swagger or Bill Bright or InterVarsity Crusade or Jack Van Impey or Old Roberts. That's got nothing to do with that. That thing says you're not to keep company with a Christian who's not living right. Nothing about what he supports. And my, what a list. A fornicator. Okay, you get a Christian stepping out and his wife, run around living like the devil in the flesh, you know to steer clear of him. Or covetous. <whistles> well, what if you cut off fellowship with all Christians who are covetous? Wouldn't that cut down your fellowship a little bit? I never heard Becky Horton or Bob Jones talk about that. Kind of quiet there, aren't you, boy? Getting all this land, $170 million plan, buying up all these acres and buying up all these buses and coveting all these houses that aren't yours. Kind of got your mouth shut about that, don't you? Talking about neo-Orthodox and Barth and Bruner and Evangelical. How about these covetous brethren? <laughs> Stay there. <laughs> or idolater or railer or drunkard or an extortioner with such a one know not to eat. You're not to have sit down and have fellowship at the same table with those kind of Christians. All right, Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. I don't believe in a secondary separation at all. I believe in, like the book says, I believe I don't get in a place where I'm yoked with somebody that's doing something wrong, and I don't have fellowship and company with Christians who aren't living right. And that's where my separation ends. All this stuff, all this stuff. Brother Denon had Brother Ruckman in. Get him off the board. <laughs> Brother Ruckman had Brother Bob Gray and kick him off the board. Bob Gray got kicked off the board of Bob Jones because he came down and preached at our place. I invited a teacher at one of these schools in the country to come preach me, and they found out about they said that he'd lose his job if he came and preached for us. You know what that is? That's the work of a bunch of little sissified, brownie, campfire girls, spoiled brats. And tell them that if you see them. I was, I'll tell you, I, I, I've got a lot of shortcomings. I'll tell you, I was a man 27 years before I was a preacher. Not even losing manhood when I got saved. They're not going to browbeat me. Oh, it's got. Did you hear who so-and-so had in? So-and-so supports so-and-so. So-and-so had so-and-so on his platform. You know who had it his platform? Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a, we had a saying. When I was a boy, it said, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. And all that stuff about so and so supporting so and so, you know who you know who should come to this pulpit here at this church. Anybody your pastor puts in that pulpit in this church, that's his pulpit. No fellowship has his business telling him who he can have in there and who he can't have in there. All that stuff, folks getting all over Rollins because he had a Harrington, and folks getting all over uh, Fowell because he had uh, one of those. One of those blacks in there, forget his name. Why, it's nothing to me. I don't particularly believe in Harrington or one of these blacks he had in, but that's his pulpit, that's his business, who he has in his pulpit. I don't care. Ain't no difference to me. If he invited me in, I'd go in right after Jesse Jackson. <laughs> Wouldn't bother me any. Of course, I don't have to worry, I don't have to worry about getting that kind of invitation. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, I'll share. <laughs> yeah, I hate that word. I'll share something with you. Uh, we're up at Baptist Fundamentalism. I went there, you know, a couple of years back. I will have that thing. I got some friends up there, too, believe it or not, you know. And I was up there going around through there, and some of my 
well as I took up the pass now tracks my way down to the to the whatever it was. And they stopped an old color boy that gave him a track, one of those Washington blacks, and gave him a track and asked if he was saved and he said, No, sir. He said, You read this, yeah, I read that. They said, I want to ask you something. And that's, you know, that Jesse Jackson was down with Cuba Castro and was shooting off his mouth and carrying on like to do. And uh, he said to that black fellow, he said, would you vote for Jesse Jackson if he's running for president? That old color boy said, shoot, no, man. <laughs> and our white boy said, why is that? He said, man, if you white folks can't run this country, how you think I think you're going to run it? <laughs> I told him, I said, I'd vote for that man, boy. Put him in. I'll vote for him. This man got some sense. Amen, amen, amen. 1617. I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division of offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. How do you spot them? By good words. They choose their speech real carefully. And fair speeches. They're all real smooth and slick and flattering and butter you up. Deceive the hearts of the simple. You're to separate yourself from them. That's Romans chapter 16. I never heard that mentioned any confidence in separation. Look out for that bunch that have that smooth, slick, cultured, polished, positive talk. Stay away from them. All right, something else. Nothing like a Bible to clear up a college education.